Regina and Claire went to a shopping mall on the weekend to buy some clothes. Regina saw an escalator going down with a big banner that said, Huge sale! Everything 99% off! Of course, they hurried there. Who wouldn't? But as soon as they headed there, everything faded out. The mall and the part of the escalator behind them vanished. It got all dark, and they had no other option but to go where the escalator would take them. They arrived at a place where they couldn't see anything. Regina yelled for help. Suddenly, three signs appeared in front of them. The first one said, This leads to a sea filled with flesh-eating mutant sharks. The second went, This leads to a forest with brain-sucking zombie mosquitoes. And the third one said, This leads to a cave covered with sharp rocks and bats with giant claws. Which one should they choose? Well, bats are harmless until provoked, whether they have small or big claws. So they should choose the third one. And as for the sharp rocks, they just need to watch their steps. They started walking in the direction of the cave, when suddenly a peculiar tiny monster cut their way. Welcome to the underworld, home of all monsters. We hope you enjoy your stay. Even if you don't, You can't ever leave here anyway. And it vanished out of sight. That's when a scary-looking city started to appear around them. What does it mean that we can't leave? Claire asked. There must be someone who can help us, Regina replied. Psst, over here. A creepy monster said from the corner of the street. Crack my riddle and I'll tell you who can help you. What goes around the house and into the house without ever touching the house? It's the sun! So, if you want to see it again, go to the restaurant called Cantina Hella and find the only human there. He might help you. And the monster left. Regina and Claire found it, but a bodyguard stopped them at the entrance. Password? We don't have it, Regina said. The bodyguard handed them a piece of paper with these numbers on it. The number that comes next is the password. Can you figure it out? Every next number is made by moving the first digit of the previous one to the end. So, the password is 1,793. Regina and Claire walked in. The place was super crowded, with human-looking monsters everywhere. It seemed impossible to spot the only real human in there. Can you see him? Well, the others may look human, but if you take a closer look, you can see their tails, fangs, horns, and all that. But this guy here doesn't have any of that, so he must be who they're looking for. Regina and Claire approached the man. His name was Eddie. They told him all about what they'd been through. He said, I know how you can get back. I do travel to Earth and back here all the time. I'll help you. Meet me here in an hour. Then he gave them his card and left. On it, there was strange writing. Can you decipher it? You need to replace all the letters with the previous letter that comes before them in the alphabet. So, it says police station. Regina and Claire got hungry. So they decided to order something to eat. The waiter brought them three different desserts. Which one should they choose? Did you notice that the eyes on the first one are actually blinking? Eh, I wouldn't eat that. And the teeth inside the second one are real. Well, that's creepy. 
But the worms inside the third one are just gummy worms. And what looks like dirt is actually chocolate crumble. So they should definitely eat this one. After eating, they headed to the police station to find Eddie. When they arrived, they saw Eddie was really panicked. I'm a monster hunter, like a detective of the underworld. And I caught this extremely dangerous monster called Winona. But she escaped from her prison cell. I don't know how. But Claire immediately figured out how she escaped. Can you? Look at the poster on the wall. It's moving slightly. There must be an airflow behind it that is coming from a tunnel. Suddenly, a guardian rushed next to them and said, Sir, someone claimed they spotted Winona at the gym. Everyone rushed there. The receptionist silently pointed them in the direction of the changing cabins. They saw the feet of three different monsters in three different changing rooms. One of them was Winona. Can you tell which one? Do you remember what the other prisoners were all wearing? The monster in the third cabin is wearing the same thing, so she must be Winona. Eddie kicked the door of the third cabin, and there she was. Yet Winona looked extremely calm for a monster who was about to go back to jail. <laughs> not so fast, she said, and created four clones of herself. Now there were five Winonas in front of them. I will give you a hint about who the real me is and let you take me back to jail only if you agree to place me in the most luxurious cell. All the Winonas said at the same time. Eddie had no choice but to accept. The first and fourth clones said that number five was the real Winona. The second and the third clones said that number one was the real Winona. And the fifth clone said that number two was the real Winona. Only one of these statements was true, and the other four were lies. So can you tell which clone is actually the real one? If only one of them told the truth, then neither the first nor the fifth clone could be the real Winona, since that would mean two clones told the truth. Nor could the real Winona be the third or the fourth clone, since that would mean no one told the truth. So the only way one of them told the truth is if the second clone is the real Winona. After Eddie placed Winona in her new luxury cell, it was time to help Regina and Claire get back home. He took them to a place called the Hound Tattoo Studio and explained that the only way they could go back home was to get a key-shaped tattoo, which would open a portal to Earth. The tattoo artist showed them his key symbols catalog and said each different key shape opened a portal to another land, and they needed to pick the one that would open a portal to Earth. Because if they can't, nobody knows where they travel. Can you help them? Remember, Eddie told them that he travels to the Earth all the time. Then he must have the Earth Portal Key tattoo as well. Now, let's take a closer look at all his tattoos. Here is the key-shaped one, and this key on the catalog is the same. So it must be the one that will help them go back home. After their tattoos were complete, Eddie activated their magic to send them home. Regina and Claire felt dizzy, as if falling through a rabbit hole. Then, suddenly, they woke up in their bedrooms at home. Wait, none of that was real? How do you think they can tell if this was all a dream or not? Simple. They should just check if they really have tattoos now. Yup. There they are. They definitely didn't have them when they were at the mall. Well, that was weird. 
Hey, how about some tricky riddles that will put your brain to work? Ready? How fast can you solve this one? Grace has seven sons and each of them has a sister. How many children does Grace have in total? The answer is eight. I bet all the sons have the same sister. So seven sons plus one sister equals eight children. Stephen's family was away this weekend, but he was found unconscious outside his mansion. Investigators had three main suspects. All of them were in the house when it happened. The first person was Maya, but she claimed to be innocent. I was cleaning the house in the morning and I took a nap in the afternoon, she told the investigators. John, the butler said, I was told to check the food inventory in the afternoon. And the last person to be interrogated was James, the driver. He claimed he'd been far away from the house that day. Yeah, I was driving the boss's children to a garden party. Which of these people do you think is guilty? It was James. All family members were away that weekend, so his alibi can't be true. What English word has the same pronunciation even after you take away two of its three letters? It's B. Phew, that one took some work. Look at these images and try to guess what's wrong. Duh! In the last picture, the woman is trying to eat soup with a fork. Like that would work. On a lazy Sunday afternoon, seven friends decided to go to the mall. Esme, Evelyn, and Elise grabbed a cup of coffee each while Ava, Ella, and Emma decided to drink some refreshing soda. Using this logic, can you figure out if Esther chose to drink coffee or soda? Esther is drinking coffee. The secret is in the girl's name. Esme, Evelyn, Elise, and Esther all have two letters E in their names, just like the word coffee. There were four pairs in the basket and four people in the room. Each person took one pair. In the end, there was still one pair left in the basket. How is that possible? The last person took a pair that was still lying in the basket. Mary's birthday was coming up and she decided to treat herself to a relaxing day at the spa. During a massage, Mary dozed off. When she woke up, the money she had in her purse was missing. Oh no! Mary had three suspects. The cashier, Erica, claimed, I was having lunch in the back. Catherine, the masseuse, said, I went to the back of the store to get some extra oil. The last person was Monica. She was another customer. She said she hadn't seen anything and had just been waiting for her appointment. Can you tell which one is the culprit? The thief is Catherine. She must have waited for Mary to fall asleep and then took her things. Look at the money hidden behind the oils. Hey, it's time for a hair appointment to trim those split ends. But in this scenario, there are only two hairdressers in town who can cut your hair. This guy or this girl. Which one should you choose? The girl, of course. If there are only two hairdressers in town, that means they cut each other's hair. And judging by the haircut the guy gave the girl, it looks like he doesn't really know what he's doing. If a rooster lays an egg on top of this cabin, in which direction will it roll? Aha! Roosters don't lay eggs, so it wouldn't roll anywhere. The shopkeeper of an expensive skincare store called the police because someone had robbed his business. He didn't notice the culprit, but according to the security camera footage, there were three customers in the store at the time of the robbery. Police officers questioned each of them. 
Michael said he'd been buying some stuff for his pets. The second suspect, Kayla, was looking for ointments and some aloe vera gel. The last person, Rachel, told the interrogators she'd been busy looking for lotions. Can you tell who's lying? Michael is the culprit. The skincare store doesn't sell pet products. Duh. Peter is a rich man who owns a lot of expensive jewelry. One day, he woke up and noticed that all of it had been stolen. Uh oh. He called a private detective to solve this case. Peter's wife Carla was the first one to be interrogated. I was showering at the time, she said nervously. Bianca, the housekeeper who had been working for the family for years, was not in the house. She said, I was cleaning the garage. The last suspect was Barb, the house chef. I was making lunch for the family, she told the detective. Can you tell who stole the jewelry? It was Barb, of course. She claimed she was cooking lunch, but the crime happened at night. A man lives on the 80th floor of a high-rise building. On rainy days, he takes the elevator all the way up. But on sunny days, he only takes the elevator halfway to his floor. And then he takes the stairs the rest of the way. Why does he do this? Well, my friends, it so happens that the man is short. Normally, he can only reach the 40th floor button. But on rainy days, he manages to push the 80th floor button with the help of his umbrella handle. Genius, huh? On a rainy day, Miranda decided to work from home. At one point, she went to the bathroom. But when she got back, she noticed that her cell phone and money had been stolen right in her own house during the day. There were three people in the house at the time. Her sister Beth claimed it wasn't her. I was still asleep at the time because I'd gone to bed late yesterday. Her other sister, Anna, said she'd been taking a stroll in the garden when it had happened. I was watching the night-scented orchid bloom. And lastly, there was Josh, Miranda's boyfriend. I've just got home for lunch, he said. What do you think? Which of these three suspects stole Miranda's money and cell phone? Anna is the culprit, of course. Night-scented orchids only bloom at night, so she probably sneaked in and grabbed Miranda's things while the girl was away. A farmer rode into the village on Monday. He stayed in the village for four days and rode out on Monday. How is that possible? The farmer's horse is named Monday. I bet you didn't guess this one, did you? Uncle Ben's farm experienced a terrible downpour and all but 15 pigs were missing and couldn't be found. How many pigs are still in the barn? If you said 15, you got it right. So, there are three important rooms in a house. The first one is a library full of rare books. The second room stores piles of money and gold. And the third room has boxes full of expensive jewelry in it. In case of a fire emergency, in which room will the police try to extinguish the fire first? The correct answer is none. Police officers don't fight fire. That's the job of firefighters. Virginia accidentally sent an email to her boyfriend instead of her best friend. She didn't want her partner to see it, so she took his laptop while he was sleeping and tried to delete the message. The laptop required a password to unlock. Luckily, there was a post-it with a hint. History, three. Music, five. Book, two, three, one. Yellow, one. What's the passcode? Each number indicated the letter Virginia had to select in the corresponding word. The third letter in history is S. The fifth letter in music is C. 
The second, third, and first letters in book are O, O, and B. And the first letter in yellow is Y. The password is Scooby. That's all for today, folks. Hope your brain is good and functioning after all these sharp riddles. See you next time.